is tomorrow 10.45. Welcome to Hampden Park, where Scotland take on the world champions, Spain. It's a European Championship qualifier, Group I fixture, and it seems a pretty critical match for Craig Levine, particularly after his strikerless side fired blanks in Prague on Friday. Good evening to you, this is Tim White, and we hope we'll be enjoying a cracker here. A virtually sell-out crowd at Hampden Park awaiting the visit of the world champions. And the match has taken on extra importance for Scotland after they suffered their first defeat of the campaign in their third outing on Friday. And it was very much a second-best performance from Scotland. Their rearguard action counted for nothing as they conceded in the second half to the Czech Republic. The Czechs look like going joint top at the moment. A match in progress against Liechtenstein at this moment. And this match getting underway shortly after we've heard the national anthems from both sides. First of all, the Royal March. Marcha Real, the national anthem of the European champions defending their trophy and the world champions, Spain. Tonight, the Scottish national anthem here in Glasgow will be sung by Amy MacDonald. of Flower of Scotland, the unofficial national anthem of the Scottish nation. And it's a nation in footballing terms that is trying to arrest a bit of a slide down the FIFA rankings. And they come up against the very best side that Scotland has ever faced, according to their own manager, Craig Levine. But let's have a look at those team lineups then. Starting with the home side tonight, and three changes from the team defeated by the Czech Republic. Alan Hutton is injured, he failed a fitness test this morning. Gary Caldwell can't play a second game in four days, and Jamie Mackey is dropped this evening. Coming in are Phil Bardsley, the Englishman, making his Scottish debut as replacement for Hutton at right back. Lee McCulloch's back from suspension and a hip injury. And there you see him, Kenny Miller up front. Yes, Scotland do have a striker tonight. 
Plenty of complications then for Craig Levine, but more straightforward for the Spanish coach, Vicente Del Bosque. He has Xavi Alonso fit after a heavy cold and replaces Llorente, which means David Villa will play in an out-and-out -out striker's role. Unless, of course, Del Bosque is planning on playing without a striker. Where have we heard that before? So the two-goal match winner... To say that's tough on Fernando Llorente. A look at the benches tonight. Stephen Fletcher added to the reserves uh, for Scotland in a striking capacity alongside the dropped Mackey, as you can see. Coldwell is available on the bench despite the promise to his club he would play just the one game of the back to back internationals. And for Spain, well, Pablo came on uh, at the uh, weekend in the match against Lithuania, and Llorente could be turned to if things get difficult. And in goal, you may notice that Victor Valdez is preferred to Pepe Reina as second-choice keeper. So almost set to go then this evening. The Group I table at the moment is looking pretty good for Spain after back-to-back -back victories. They coasted to a 4-0 win against Liechtenstein and then overcame Lithuania 3-1, while Cla Craig Levine's tournament got off to a pretty good start with a draw in Lithuania. And then they beat Liechtenstein by the skin of their teeth before the defeat in a very disappointing way it has to be said against the Czech Republic if you're being kind to the Scotland coach you say it was a 4-2-2-2 formation the strikers hardly got a look in and most of the Scottish media reacted adversely in saying it was a 4-6-0 and plenty of ex-players as well heaping the criticism on Craig Levine away we go then you should know by now that the Spanish are wearing red their familiar kit they're attacking the goal away to your left as you watch this one from Hampden Park Three points is all that can be won tonight, realistically. But you have to say that Spain will already be well on their way to the finals if they manage to get another three points here, having beaten two of their main contenders already. But Scotland looking bright in the early stages, a chance for pressure, but PK will get the ball away from Kenny Miller's cross. Very good start and just the sort of positive response that Craig Levine demanded and told the nation to expect. And Fletcher moves forward. It will be Graham Dorans of West Bromwich Albion to deliver. Watch out for David Weir, the big man in there. Goes beyond him towards the far post. They'll settle for a throw-in that Stephen Naismith will prepare to take. Scotland so often struggle against the minnows, flatter to deceive when much is expected of them, but when their back's against the wall, how often do they come out fighting? Remember, Italy, France, Netherlands have all been defeated here recently, and while Scotland have failed to travel with anything like conviction or success in the past few years, they've been pretty impressive at home that quite often is overlooked by many of their critics. What can you say about Spain then that hasn't already been said before? They were made to work by Lithuania, who did put men behind the ball, but what can you expect when you go to the defending champions of both the major competitions? Took them until the early stages of the second half to take the lead in Salamanca, which incidentally is Vicente Del Bosque's hometown, so it was a homecoming for him. It all went wrong when, just a few minutes after taking the lead, David Ashurnas equalised for Lithuania, who are proving a surprise package in this group, having already gone to the Czech Republic and been victorious, but Llorente second shortly afterwards gave Spain a bit of breathing space and David Silva of Manchester City now wrapped it up. Here's Iniesta. Awkward one. Spain may be content to settle for the corner. Veer indeed does allow the ball to be nodded out of play with hardly a challenge. First touch for Phil Bartley there. Iniesta's drive into the box. First corner for Spain then. Iniesta will take it, his options, he does have one short, but it's two against two out there. Silver helping it back. 
Comes again to Iniesta, this time Scotland have switched off. Man who won the World Cup for them. Should be McGregor's ball and without a real challenge. The Scottish number one takes it. And it's always nice to get a first touch for a goalkeeper, especially against such opposition. We expected Kenny Miller to play the lone striker's role, but it is interesting that he has already got support, the Rangers man from Naismith and Morrison, who are both pushing up there. You can see from that shot that uh, also the Manchester United player Darren Fletcher will move forward from midfield as well. And Lee McCulloch will play the holding midfield role, so it's uh, pretty much a diamond formation. Fletcher further forward than many expected, I would expect. Piol, PK. Established centre-back pairing now with uh, Xavi Alonso dropping deep to help out and protect the back four along with Busquets here. Iniesta. And we see Tiki Taki tonight, Spain so comfortable on the ball, their passing movement. Silva. Bit of a licence to roam tonight for David Silva. Xavi Alonso can hit them from distance. Scotland seemed to telegraph the short pass, but Iniesta came off best from it until the intervention of Stephen Whittaker. Passed a fitness test to play here tonight, didn't do so well with the clearance. Ball won't danger Scottish defenders. Morrison. Bartley. An accomplished start, and that's an unfortunate flag for Scotland. As you saw, Casillas would have got there first anyway, but... It was a tight decision, didn't quite get back in time. Had Fletcher gone himself, then he might have been, or he would have been onside, but Miller had just transgressed the red line. Spain went to their glory in the World Cup in the best possible way. They won every single qualifier. It wasn't the toughest group, but did feature Belgium and Turkey. Home and away, no one could touch them, let alone defeat them. They started as favourites in South Africa, but lost their opening game. I'm sure Craig Levine was watching how Switzerland managed to do it. I think at this stage you do need some luck to be able to beat Spain, especially if you're a country the size of Switzerland or Scotland, and Switzerland had it that day. Will Scotland get some luck this evening? McCulloch. Winterker. Too much room to work in. The ball stays in play for Dorrance. Back to Whittaker. Got you making himself available, but it goes to McCulloch. Smith wanted to flick inside, might not go out of play, but Piol is experienced enough to see it behind. Liam Doran's winning only his fifth cap tonight. He's in favour under Craig Levine. As we said before kick-off, I can't stress enough the importance of being at home. We need to use that advantage as best we can. The Hamden crowd can be intimidating. They've been in fine voice in the 40 minutes or so before kickoff. Casillas, was that just a touch of arrogance, perhaps? Took a little risk, didn't he? But look how they passed it from one penalty area to the other. Iniesta. Alonso helps it on to Busquets via. Silver popping up on the right. Silver left footed. No trouble for McGregor to the delight of the Scotland supporters here. Silver just coming to life at Manchester City after a slowish sort of start. Had a disappointing World Cup finals, really. Started the opening game but was axed after the defeat by Switzerland. He made only one other appearance, a late substitute in the semi finals against Germany.
Well, Alonso seemed to miss time his jump there, and the decision goes against him as Naismith goes to ground. The referee this evening is Massimo Busaka, 41-year-old from the Ticino province, the Italian-speaking region of Switzerland, as you may have guessed by his name. Driven in deep, it's too far though. Manus pushed forward. He scored a couple of goals for Scotland in the past. Not been from set pieces, but Big Mick just not quite tall enough, even with his stature. Manus's goal against Liechtenstein in the late, late show in the last match here at Hampden. More than three years since he opened his international account against another team in this group, Lithuania. Scotland getting stuck in, which is what they have to do and where they can match Spain. You would think that in the passing and maybe the finishing, it's been unkind to Alan McGregor, but probably in the goalkeeping department. Most areas, Spain are best, and that's why they are the world number one. But for grit, Scotland can match them for tenacity, for tackling hard, for forcing mistakes. Nearly foul Miller with the through ball, but at the other end, they could be in trouble. The flag has gone up. Well, it can't have been from the back pass that Villa was denied the scoring opportunity. He must have just been straying offside from the initial rebound forward. A little let off for Scotland and a reminder not to let David Veer out of their sights. His striking record is just simply amazing. 44 goals in 68 caps. Fletcher in well. And the though has pulled it back for the foul earlier because there was no advantage for Spain. Iniesta making space for himself. Two midfielders sitting right in front of him. Good opportunities here for Spain. Via in the middle, so too Iniesta in the end. The rampaging pullback Sergio Ramos is denied. Spain will have to settle for the corner. Ramos was a real threat against Lithuania on Friday. Had a really good game. Loves to get forward for a man who started as a centre-back. Did supply crosses for two of the three goals in the second half against Lithuania. PK is a real danger here. And as Pio, we saw what he can do in the World Cup as well. Goes beyond all of them. Not a great delivery. And not even Ramos himself can get there for that one. McGregor's in decent form, he'll have to be against Del Bosque's side. Thought it might be a hard act to follow after Luis Aragonés led them to the last European Championships in Austria and Switzerland. Del Bosque topped it all with their first ever World Cup victory. And he's hoping that they can successfully defend their crown in Poland and Ukraine. Finals a mere 18 months, 20 months away, and there could be another helping hand for Spain in the end. Via flashes it just wide of the McGregor goal. You see that again he evaded four of the defenders, found space between Whitaker and the central defenders. Couldn't quite exploit with his left foot. In fairness to Scotland, it's the first. Shot at goal that Spain have managed. Piol uses his experience to win the decision. Figa had a bit of a nightmare against Lithuania by his standards, managed to hit the post from no more than three yards in one attack when it was still goalless in that game. Didn't quite look his deadly best throughout the game, if I'm being honest. I did see the game. From Miller, 
Fletcher tries to return it through to Naismith. The flag has gone up, though. Did look clearly offside, and the assistant referee on this near side agreed. Ramos. Javi Alonso. Busquets. Interesting, it's Santa Cazola is alongside Iniesta and pushing up now towards David Villa in the centre of the field. We really expected Santa Cazola to be playing in a wider position. Maybe Silva would be in the free roll, but he's been pretty interchangeable so far. Iniesta chose the wrong option there, dare I criticise the great man. Dorrance, well, it was a splendid reverse pass, he was off balance really, it put pressure on PK, but the former Manchester United trainee dealt with it well. And Casillas, likewise. Sergio Ramos, opportunity here for Silva, three in the box, and it's Beer. It's McGregor in the right place at the near post to deny Spain the lead. When you just can't afford to let Silva um, before him Sergio Ramos have so much space and freedom on the right-hand side, otherwise you will be punished, it's just a question of when. Via in his own up front tonight, and Scotland will be hoping that his relatively poor form against Lithuania continues into a real barren spell of two games, seldom goes two or three games without a goal. Via set the Spanish record of goals in a calendar year with 13 in 2008 and then did the same in 2009. Well, it's been a really poor year for him this time. He's only managed nine in 2010. A whole host of records already his. I'm hoping to become Spain's outright top scorer. Lovely football, and McGregor this time denies Silva with his feet. Already clear which of the two goalkeepers is the busier. One touch stuff, breathtaking at times, but McGregor kept him out. Scotland made a bright start for about the first minute. Spain have been gathering momentum ever since. Xavi Alonso. Naismith. Back in the full-back position, Dorans bought some time and did well. To the appreciative applause of the Scotland fans who were all stood up around this stadium. A stadium that's familiar to a couple of the Spanish contingent. Including their coach, Vicente Del Bosque. Who was the coach of Real Madrid when they beat Bayer Leverkusen in the Champions League final back in 2002? Nico Casillas was keeper even back then for Real Madrid, even though he's still only 29. You may remember that final for so that goal by Zinedine Zidane. Hamden remembers it. Yeah, uh, had strayed offside again. A risk, really, tonight, even though you have someone with Villa's goal-scoring prowess and record to play that man up front on his own because it had been working so well with Villa playing a support role to a bigger target man. You rented done really well and has a fledgling international career goal-scoring record that is making people sit up and take notice, six goals from 11 games after his double against Lithuania. Almost as well again, Fletcher's timed his run, can he keep it in? Tough ask, might come yet! Well, James Morrison denied almost on the line, and Spain, if they do have a vulnerability, they say it's at the back. And they very nearly went behind. After some pretty average defending, they seem convinced that Fletcher wouldn't keep it in. We'll take another look at that at the moment, but the danger switches to the other end temporarily. Scotland's clearest chance of the match by a long way. 
came about through the tenacity of their skipper. Switched left to Iniesta, taking on Bardsley. And Silva was denied by the old man. And Davy Weir had done really well just when his country needed him. What's noticeable is that the ball is seldom going out of play apart from the succession of corners. And it is a joy to watch Spain. And when teams have to come at them with home advantage, you do get some cracking matches sometimes. Silva has already gone close. Xavi Alonso. Kind of a real fulcrum to this Spanish side. Xavi Alonso. I think they missed him against Lithuania. Here's Juan Captevilla. Mr. takes it down with ease. The three ways play on, no suspicion of handball. Xavi Alonso again. Again, it's rolled easily towards Villa. To Villa waiting for it on the edge of the area, so too Santi Cazola didn't reach either of them. And it's Scotland's desperation to clear. There's only a red shirt back, and it was Gerard Piquet who picked it up, figuratively speaking. Xavi Alonso moves forward again. The Real Madrid man winning his 80th cap tonight. Iniesta can surely look forward to 80 caps in the future. 53 for him now. Pimila keeping out Nabalor at left back. And he over inside. Iniesta Good battling from Dons again. But look at Puyol, how quickly he reacts and reads the game. BK, every Scotland player is inside their own half and deep in their own half. Miller just about making his way to halfway line now. As the Scottish crowd try to raise their team and the national pride with another rendition. The flower of Scotland. Scotland can't get the ball at the moment, that's the problem for them. Santa Gazzola. Too far is it for Silva? And yes, it is. Did beat the offside trap, but couldn't quite collect the return. But there must I wasn't counting. There must have been something like 30 passes. And finally, we get a chance to look again at the chance for Scotland. Miller might have been offside. Fletcher certainly wasn't. Did the ball go out of play? There was a suspicion of it. In the end, Captivilla put his body on the line. Arguable whether the keeper would have got to it. This will give us a better idea. I think he might have done Casillas. It's hard. No, I don't think he would, would he? So a crucial intervention from Captivilla. To deny James Morrison the opening goal here. He's never scored for his country. Ambitious touch from Kenny Miller. Pressure on the defender, but ball came back off him. But the Scottish crowd are loving the fight being shown by their countrymen here. Chasing lost causes, just as Craig Levine said they would. So he was very positive about this match and also really excited and looking forward to it and as short as the players were as well. No inferiority complex. If you can't get yourselves up for a game against the world champions in front of a sellout partisan crowd, then I guess there's not too much hope for you. A little push in the back there. Referee Mr. Busaka was also a referee in that uh, Champions League final here at Hampton in 2002. It was on the officiating team, I should say. He was fourth official. It was an all-Swiss refereeing team, and Urs Meyer was the Swiss number one at the time, and he took charge of the game. But the soccer himself was back in Glasgow for another European final, the UEFA Cup final staged in 2007 in Scotland. Had a Spanish feel to it as well. It was an all Spanish affair, and Se Sevilla beat Espanol on penalties. Will Spain be getting the points here this evening? They've dominated most of the game, but Scotland have carved out one really good opportunity. Sandy Gazzola 
gives it away. Inception by Naismith and Scotland virtually doubling up in the full-back position. It was a somewhat confusing for Scotland if you are a regular watcher of them, maybe one of the expats around the globe because they do stick to 1-11 to instead of squad numbers. Scotland disappointed at the decision and the referee will just tell the Scottish players to calm down and show no dissent. No yellow cards yet. And Scotland only just squeaked past Liechtenstein after what looked like it would have been one of the most humiliating nights in Scottish history for a long time. They trailed against the minnows of European football. Scotland would have been hoping that Liechtenstein could do them a favour this evening in their own backyard in Vaduz and take points off the Czech Republic, but it isn't panning out like that at the moment, I have to tell you. Let's watch Capdevila's cross. Firmly away, Manis putting head to ball. Penny Miller dispossessed rather easily. Xavi Alonso. Always so many options, aren't there? Iniesta turns left. Sandy Gazzola takes it down nicely. Just enough for the football to attack from Barsley, who's made an impressive start to life at international football after 25 minutes. You know, the score in Vaduz at the moment in the other Group I qualify being played simultaneously. They are midway through the second period as opposed to the first period that we're in here. And it's still Liechtenstein nil, Czech Republic 2 as it was at half-time. That result would put the Czech Republic on to six points, level with Spain. But if Spain get a point here, they'd be on seven and Scotland would be on five and Lithuania four. Scotland would have played a game more than the other nations, though. And Scotland's problem is travelling. They haven't won or even scored away from home since World Cup qualifier in... Iceland back in 2008. As we said, the home form not too bad. They've won four of the last five home matches here at Hamden. And can take hard from that. I'm not afraid of anyone here. Iniesta, a bit too much space. Honestly, just not seeing the Spanish midfielder sneak away from him and at the far post. Another opportunity he goes a begging. Iniesta creating the opportunity. Can't afford to give him that sort of space. He will toy with you. Three to choose from. Gregor's goal not troubled in the end. Sergio Ramos, who has scored many a goal for club and country. Five for his nation. It's a bit of an injury doubt for this one after coming off before full-time after suffering a knock against Lithuania. Been first choice right back since he surpassed Michel Salgado in the pecking order. And we think that's a back pass here. And referee allowing play to continue. He's got a good record in international football the referee and Champions League football, approaching 100 matches in UEFA competitions all told now, a 41-year-old official, but he has had quite a lot of criticism back home for his performances domestically in the Swiss competitions. Xavi Alonso, was a great ball, but McGregor saw it quickly enough, and again it was Sergio Ramos down that right-hand side causing the problems. McGregor doing well, three clean sheets in his last eight appearances, for Scotland, or in his eight appearances so far. And make it four in nine tonight, it would be the biggest achievement of all. Saka in the action again, giving Spain the free kick, and just last month he was sworn at almost throughout the entire game and booed in equal measure by fans of FC Thun in the Swiss League after they felt him, his poor decisions cost them the game against FC Zurich. It was round eight of the Swiss season last month and promoted two were unbeaten until that point. He failed to give 
a blatant penalty for a handball on the line, which would have resulted in a sending off as well, to point out, and also disallowed a goal for offside incorrectly, although to blame his assistance for that more than the referee himself, but he still took it in the neck. Not quite taken from the right place, but didn't really matter, did it? Sandigazola coming deep, Busquets, what a couple of years it has been for Sergio Busquets. Silva running through the defence, it's still David Silva, they're getting numbers back, the loose ball could have gone anywhere. In the end, Naismith, the second left fullback tonight, it appears, got it away. Just field balls, not just long balls hitting hopes, are they? Pinpoint precision. Leicester finding PK will advance. Iniesta still. First header away wasn't good enough. It might yet come for Captain or even Via and Via denied by McGregor again. Just short of the half hour. David Via again finds there's no route to goal to take him past. Raul McGregor called and has dropped it. And in the end, and he's got a free kick for his troubles. Carlos Puyol not impressed with that decision. The crowd not impressed with Puyol's intervention. And he's entitled to go to the ball. McGregor did take a knock. And the Scottish fans sense optimism here. They've gone past a third of this match already. I suppose in many respects, even if they're held here, to get a point against the world champions would be a bonus point, considering that they have not dropped points in a qualifier since 2007. Scotland still have qualification in their own hands. They'd need a good record to be one of the better runners-up. Poland and Ukraine qualifying as hosts. Scotland will probably feel their critical match is the one against the Czechs to come. Don't discount Lithuania either. They showed it off in Spain and indeed scored in Salamanca to suggest they could be a force throughout this qualifying period that'll end in a year's time. Greg Levine will be angry at that wasting of possession. Almost Scottish international himself, of course. It was ball in, we wisely let it go, and Barzi didn't know what was around him, so put the ball out safety first from the Sunderland fullback, who was born in Salford. He was with Manchester United for years and years, made his debut for them in their under eight team. And it was Puyol flying in, but never looking like he'd get the effort on target. Probably remember his only goal in this calendar year was the crucial winner against Germany, 17 minutes from the end of their World Cup semi-final. And Spain, despite all their pretty football and fantastic footballers, were grinding out 1-0 victories on all their knockout matches by a goal to nil in South Africa. Portugal, Paraguay, Germany, and then after extra time, Iniesta's goal, defeating the Netherlands in that, should we say, bloody battle. Not exactly winning too many friends that night, Netherlands, especially considering their footballing heritage. Lovely run through the middle, Scotland didn't pick up, David Silva. Xavi Alonso with the wonderful ball through, 
and as Scotland stood and stared, he wasn't just onside, he was a mile clear. But the Manchester City big money man couldn't finish, it was on his wrong side really. And he looked a bit awkward as he tried to get his 11th goal for Spain. That's scored in three of the four internationals since the World Cup final. And he's only played the equivalent of two and a half matches, having not started one of them and been brought off early in another. So only two is in form for his country. Xavi Alonso with a slip there. I think it was handball, and the referee waved an advantage and must have considered that it had gone on long enough not to pull it back when Scotland lost possession. Xavi Alonso does better this time. Iniesta. Silva wants the throw in. I don't think he's going to get it. I think he wanted his fullback to push further forward as well. Boske doesn't look like he's sitting too comfortably at the moment, but nothing to be too worried about at this stage of the game. He was saying that any time you come to the UK, it is difficult. You need a lot of effort to match the fighting spirit you inevitably encounter. People think every game's easy for us, but it isn't. Scotland will fight and battle, he said, and my players must be ready for that. Barnsley made good distance with the header. It was an awkward one because the ball was a little bit behind him, but Iniesta takes it off it. Silva lays it back to Andres Iniesta. A little over ten minutes to half-time. Sevilla went to the left, but the ball went right. Busquets. Iniesta and Captain Villa again on the left, but it's Iniesta on his right foot shooting. Rather weak effort. McGregor called into action again, but slightly less dramatically than his previous interventions. After all that, McGregor forced to kick. Busquets was alone and waiting for it. K2 Busquets forced his way into the first team at Barcelona just as they were starting to play that all-conquering football under Pep Guardiola. What a first season to win six trophies. And he made his international debut in April 2009 in a friendly against Turkey, Sergio Busquets. And Silva. And the doubling up at fullback, and it worked, and there could be something for Massimo Busaka to get involved with here, because Whittaker felt that Silva had a go at him after the ball had passed, and I think it was out of your shot as well, but the crowd reacted. This is what happened now. The ball had gone, and a little kick out at the Scotland man, Dorrance. No cards produced by Busaka, and I told you about that controversy in a league game last month. Well, the same thing happened to him in a cup tie a year ago as well. Consistently booed throughout the match and sworn at. He said it was disgraceful after the whistle. Firm challenge from Whitaker, the referee didn't like it. The sort of challenge that might be expected to be seen in the Scottish Premier League week in, week out, but he took player and ball and unfairly in the referee's eyes, although... Nearly just missed with the first boot. It was the trailing leg that took the player out, but Scotland have won it back. Fletcher has been quiet for the last ten minutes, Scotland not having seen too much of the ball since he set up their best chance of the game nearly 20 minutes ago now. More hope for Scotland, they are being brave. Naismith venturing out of his own half. Ball too deep. And he will chase, but he won't get there. Remember how Kenny Miller took it when he was told he was being axed for the game in Prague for a deputant. Jamie Mackey dropped back to the bench this evening. He and Fletcher are the forwards, should they be needed later in the game. Scotland are without a whole host of players, but so too are Spain, despite the fact they have this wonderful talent on display. Only Coldwell not able to be played this evening. The promise was made to his club manager, Roberto Martinez, at Wigan, that he wouldn't be played in both matches, but he is on the bench tonight. 
Craig Gordon, former Scottish number one, is recovering from his broken arm. Just played one reserve game, but McGregor's in good form. Paul Hartley, Scott Brown with a fractured metatarsal. Kevin Thompson, who's recovering from a broken leg. James McFadden, Kirk Broadfoot, James McEverly, all injured. Barry Robson suspended. Barry Ferguson making himself unavailable. Pretty long list for a country quite short on footballing resources. Still so getting the bird, as they say in these parts, but drilling one on target. McGregor saw it from a long way off. Not a good idea of the view for the Scottish keeper there. Scotland are being hammered in that regard, as you can see on your screen, but they're giving it all, they're getting men behind the ball when necessary, and with Miller receiving occasional support from the width from Whitaker there, and also Naismith, and on the other side, Barnsley trying to get forward on occasions to support Morrison. Spain aren't having it entirely their own way, it may just seem like that. It's just a... An airy fairy pass, really, from Lee McCulloch. He'll be disappointed with that, but Ferguson has battled back. Manchester United man goes to ground. He's the one man that most of the Spanish players named as A, the danger, or B, the only one they've heard of. A little harsh. Sergio Ramos has been looking at the referee, wanting decisions. Almost every time he's lost possession. Fetcher is such an integral part of this Scottish team. He'll make his way forward, but McCulloch has scored from some set pieces. It's delivered by Dorrance. McCulloch is the man they aim for, but he's beaten. And Capdevilla quietly brings it away. Capdevilla again. Spain, too, are shorn of plenty of talent themselves. No Pedro, he's out with a hamstring injury, and Fernando Torres still has a groin problem. Xavi Hernandez, Cesc Fabregas, Jesus Navas, Raul Albiol, all missing as well for Spain, not included in the squad. They do have some experience in this squad. Lovely ball in from Captain Villa, and the follow-up shot is deflected over his own net in the end. Mister, who got the goal to win the World Cup just a few months ago, almost breaking the deadlock here. Spain well ahead on corners as well. Up towards Sergio Ramos, just beyond him and Puyol. Ramos still wanting something inside the area. As Villa looks for an opening, Villa went to ground, and Scotland break quickly. Beautiful pass out, now a chance for Kenny Miller. Captain Villa's back, but Kenny Miller will look to his right, and couldn't thread the ball through, a vital interception from Sergio Busquets as Dorans was waiting to pounce. Scotland playing like the away team, and while they bemoan their luck there, the throwing was taken quickly. And almost... The counter-attack from Spain, but McCulloch broke that one up well. Well, Kenny Miller had made a great run. Must have had thoughts of going for goal, but he saw Doran's better positioned and really important touch from Busquets. Miller knows that he maybe ought to have done better. Mister Fletcher there tried to marshal midfield and still the man in so much space. This time, Sandy Gazzola. Sergio Ramos, Sandy Gazzola. Iniesta. Still he keeps hold of it. Fleet of foot. Juan Capdevila. Andres Iniesta. Alonso. A bit more purpose with that pass. Capdevila's cross comes to Sergio Ramos. Was that a hand? The referee says that it is going to be a penalty for the handball. The arm outstretched and a yellow card to boot for the fullback Stephen Whitaker. They can't believe it, they thought that he whistled for the corner, 
but the arm was out and it seemed to strike the arm. He claims it went into the side. You'll get a good view here. Look more arm than body to me. It was probably goal bound. And you can certainly see why the referee gave that one. It came from Captain Villa's cross. The defender himself was a little bit out of position. And that angle, it seems pretty blatant. So Whitaker becomes the first man in the book, but far more important to him is this penalty that will be taken by David Villa, who missed two penalties in World Cup qualifying. Can McGregor be the hero? Or will Villa break the scoring record for Spain? He sneaks it in. Not too much confidence about the spot kick. David Villa breathes a huge sigh of relief and gives Spain the lead. International goal number 45 puts him top of the all-time scoring charts. It was close. McGregor guessed right. Furiously beat his fists in frustration at being unable to keep it out. And for all their dominance and pretty football, they take the lead from the penalty spot. And just before half-time, that will be a dagger blow to Craig Levine's team. They must regroup, and they must still believe that they can get back into this contest. But, boy, it's going to be hard now. Fletcher does enough to win the throwing. We understand that this could be the last throwing of the half because no injury time will be signalled here. Morris New had that chance off the line in the first period, and there goes the whistle right on cue. So, booze, but it's more of disappointment after Whittaker's handball was spotted by Massimo Basaka, and David Villa just put away the penalty to give Spain, the world and European champions, the advantage at the break. Join us again for the second half at Hampden Park, where it's Scotland nil, Spain won. Welcome back to Hampden Park for the second half of this Group I encounter between Scotland and Spain with the world and European champions leading by a goal to nil at half-time. And Craig Levine has made a change at half-time, or is about to. And as you can see, Charlie Adam is the man that he's called from the bench. The Blackpool man who's just heading back down the tunnel, maybe to uh, get a piece of tape or something, or take a ring off and give it to a member of the Scottish coaching team. But it will be the... Young Blackpool man, 24 years of age, will win his sixth cap and he will replace Lee McCulloch, who was suffering with a bit of a hip injury, even though he returned from suspension tonight. So it's more or less like for like, although Charlie Adam will, one suspects, get forward a little bit more than McCulloch managed in the first half. Needs must for Scotland. Spain will start again with the same 11 that started the match. And Massimo Busaka will get us underway shortly. We understand that McCulloch has been suffering from a bit of a groin injury as well during the first half. It will be of some concern to Rangers for their Scottish Premier League campaign ahead. 45 minutes then for Scotland to get back into this game against the world number one. And avoid more pressure being heaped on Craig Levine, only ten months into his tenure as Scottish coach. And to avoid losing more ground in this Group I table. Where the Czech Republic duly completed that 2-0 victory over Liechtenstein in the other game in this group this evening. So temporarily, Spain on six points and the Czech Republic on six points at the head of the group. Spain will be top out right tonight, though, as long as they don't allow Scotland to score two or more in this half. Only once throughout the whole of the World Cup qualifying campaign 
all the finals, did a side, managed to score two. And Bosnia did that, qualification was already assured and Spain still hit five. First corner of the second half is a decent delivery to the near post. Scotland will gather possession again with Bartley. He's done well on his international debut. Shot from the substitute, we, uh, Adam goes well over the bar in the end, but uh, worth a crack. Did start his career in Scotland at Rangers. Played in the UEFA Cup final in 2008, but never managed really to hold down a starting role with them. Went on loan to Blackpool the season after that UEFA Cup final defeat. Picked because of his form in England with Blackpool and likely Premier League stars this season. Charlie Adam, one of the driving force behind them. Might take penalties if he is uh, lucky enough to see Scotland awarded a penalty because he scored with three penalties in his last six games in England. And balance to the side as well with that left foot. It's a decent ball in, but Puyol saw it from a long way out. Fletcher trying to close down the space, but... He forces the pass a little earlier and uh, doesn't reach Via. The goal scorer from the penalty spot for Del Bosque's side. That is looking increasingly comfortable. He's seen it all before. He did say the danger for Spain lies in corner kicks and set-piece plays generally. So does Scotland have a real presence in those areas. Some unfamiliar faces on the bench for Spain tonight. Ignacio or Nacho Monreal. Pablo Hernandez and Bruno Soriano. All fairly inexperienced. Casillas. <laughs> Hurried into a clearance again, Scotland started the first period really well and Craig Levine must have been urging them to make a similar start in his second half. Scotland with their one real moment of danger in the first period. So Cap de Villa in the way for Morrison's goal-bound effort. It was almost cleared off the line. Scotland chances and set pieces and everything like that have been few and far between. They are a little short of pace at the back, so they have to be wary, and Whittaker already booked, needed to win that one. McManus is quicker than Weir. Christoph Berra, who's on the bench tonight, is probably the quickest centre-back in the squad. Opportunity for Dorrance. Lovely ball down the right, brilliantly taken down by Barsley. Shows he's got two feet as well, though doesn't quite manage to get the ball into the danger area of the penalty spot. And all the way back from Dorrance to his keeper, McGregor, who had a good first half, could have been far worse, the damage for Scotland, had it not been for McGregor. Miller. Chances few and far for him this evening. PK forced into a corner, quite literally, perhaps. No, he's come away with a goal kick after Morrison. Got the last touch on that one. PK, who returned to Barca from Manchester United after the spell in the academy there. Became first choice at El Camp Nou when he eased past veteran Rafael Marquez in the starting lineup. Casillas only led in three goals in his last ten games for club and country. And for Spain, in his last 50 appearances, has conceded just 21 goals. Astonishing record. Silva. Sergio Ramos, who's been a real attacking threat this evening, the fullback. Here he is again. Santa Cazola of Villarreal. Real Madrid fullback inside to the left hand side now, and the silver is free. Time to take it down, and it needed the fingertip save from McGregor to push it beyond the goal. 
Getting closer, David Silva. Again, Scotland guilty of letting a player have too much room in the penalty area. Didn't strike it quite as cleanly as he would have liked, but it was a very good save nonetheless from the Scotland keeper. Iniesta, Sonny Cazola supplied across from this sort of position for a goal against Lithuania, but he went to ground rather easily under James Morrison's challenge. Very little in it there. Morrison wasn't amused by it, was he? Sandy Cazola possibly only in the squad because of the injury to Jesus Navas, or certainly in the starting lineup. Many thought he would be left out of the starting lineup tonight, Sandy Cazola, but as in the end. Fernando Llorente, who, despite his two goals against Lithuania, was left on the bench. And the handball against Morrison by Capdevila. And Morrison will be ruining, not finding the net in the first 20 minutes. That's a great ball over Naismith. Miller's made space in the middle. Spanish reinforcements getting back, and Whitaker delivers a poor ball to add to his anguish, having conceded the penalty in the first half. And look at the counter-attack with Whittaker, one of the defenders, out of position, so Silva can look to his right, he sees Busquets, goes to his left instead, the momentum has gone out of it, but not the danger. Niesta delivers it early to Villa. Villa tries to make room again, Weir needs to be strong, it's bobbling awkwardly and cleared by McManus. Scotland almost bringing about their own downfall. He has known quite a bit about his previous 45 goals. He nearly didn't know anything about the 46th. To Villa's throw. Xavi Alonso returned the favour. McManus away. Good header too. Almost inevitably though, the loose ball is picked up by a red shirt. PK now. Yes. Yes, looked almost surprised that a Scotland man managed to intercept that then, the cheek of it. Attacking defence at the moment. No surprise to see which team is attacking. And had to wait more than 40 years to lift silverware, and it came in Euro 2008. 11 players featured in both... 2006 and 2010 World Cups. And many are still in the squad today, the likes of Casillas, Reina, Marchena, Puyol, Sergio Ramos, Niesta, Xavi Alonso and David Villa are all here tonight. Another Sergio Ramos with another good cross and maybe should have done better on that occasion as well inside the penalty area. Santi Cazola, not a regular scorer, only two international goals for the Villarreal. I say wide man, but he's not been playing very wide this evening. He was chosen in the Euro 2008 squad ahead of Albert Riera, which caused a bit of a fuffle back home in Spain, but made five substitute appearances as Spain finally got their hands on silverware. a nice ball too, opportunities, now it's Sonny Gazzola again, and Iniesta, and two, simple as you like again, they can pass sides to death and then be incisive when it matters, and for Andres Iniesta, for him a simple finish in the end, his eighth international goal after Sonny Gazzola was denied, Nothing McGregor could do about it. Xavi Alonso, instrumental. Via again, selfless. Niesta with the follow-up. Well, he's done it all. Four La Liga titles, two Champions League trophies, European champion, world champion. I suppose a goal at Hampden Park is nothing special, but it does put Spain on course for yet another qualifying victory.
and for top spot outright in Group I again. The qualification procedure is a little complicated. All the winners go through, plus the best runner-up, and then the other runners-up will go into a playoff. The eight teams playing home and away. And the four winners of those ties will join the other ten, plus the two hosts, Ukraine and Poland, in the finals in June 2012. Craig Levine's men have a lot of work to do and ground to catch up now if they are to avoid... Another summer without reaching a major finals. Never fared particularly well in the European Championships to qualify for a succession of World Cups where there was no great glory to ride home about. And faithful doing their part. And their team has just simply not been good enough. So far, at least. There was a fear that, having conceded on the stroke of half-time with that penalty, the game might run away from Craig Levine's men. And after a promising start, it's now looking decidedly ropey for Scotland in Group I. And their main problem is undoubtedly lack of goals. They've only scored nine goals in their last 18 internationals, if you count this one now, and just three in their last nine. Two of those came against Liechtenstein. The other one was Brown's winner in the friendly victory over the Czech Republic back in March. Half firepower on the pitch. Kenny Miller's out there. Tries to find Naismith. Go back. Is it game on at Hamden? Perfect delivery from Kenny Miller back in the starting lineup. And the Rangers man, Stephen Naismith, gets his first goal for his country. It was Spain's turn to be charitable at the back and let a man free. And that man, Stephen Naismith, reduces the arrears just three minutes after Scotland went two down. Were the Spanish guilty of taking their foot off the pedal? Well, it's hardly been quiet here all evening, even after the second goal. And now, after that third goal in this contest, the decibel count has gone up immeasurably. Naismith began his career with Kilmarnock and scored 19 goals three seasons ago. Rangers paid about £2 million for him. And he really is in form, scored in four of Rangers' last five games coming into these back-to-back -back internationals. Didn't get a sniff in his, shall we say, midfield or defensive role against the Czech Republic, and tonight he's been used as a second left-back virtually throughout the first period, but now they're chasing the game. Naismith is able to get forward more on that left-hand side. And Scotland have another set-piece here, where Vicente Del Bosque said that Scotland could be dangerous. There was disappointment for Scotland fans at home last night in the under-21s tournament. Scotland had high hopes against Iceland and were beaten at Hibernian's Easter Road ground by two goals to one and eliminated 4-2 on aggregate. Their European team, uh, team dreams died, but here still hopes of getting something from this game. McManus and Weir, both centre-backs forward. Referee saying the wall has to come back a little further. 23-year-old Graham Dorans delivers. Only red shirts around, PK away. Put it back in, though. Miller is waiting for a mistake. Two Spanish players going for the same ball, not something you see too often. A little tug from Fletcher. Applause ripples round this famous old stadium. A Scotland deal with the first pressure that Spain have applied since the goal. Naismith heads on but offside against Kenny Miller. Entered Scotland's role of honour after coming on as a substitute against the Czech Republic, Kenny Miller. 26th Scottish player to reach 50 caps and he received a presentation before kick-off, as did Darren Fletcher, who 
spotted up 50 caps just an international earlier now it is 52nd in the collection Santa Gazzola's ball was intercepted and Scotland might break here have to be careful Dorans is outnumbered and loses possession to Busquets Alonso Liverpool man Mister again, tireless. Via, and then off the mark. Well, he scraped home the penalty, and that apart. David Via does not look too confident in front of goal at the moment, for him at least. He left Valencia for something like 40 million euros when he moved to Barcelona on a four-year deal in the summer. Over 35,000 welcomed David Via to. El Camp Nou for his official unveiling. Hit 12 goals throughout the World Cup, Cup campaign for Spain en route to glory. Seven in qualifying despite missing two penalties and five in the finals themselves when he was almost the winner of the Golden Boot. Whitaker. Ramos has done well, made up the ground and allowed it to run out of play without interfering with the course of the ball. So last night Scotland's under-21s were beaten. Naismith, a graduate from the under-21s, 24 years of age now, with a perfectly directed header from Nils Cross, and that's what it means to the boss. A rare goal for them. A rare goal for Spain to concede. Fantastic goals in last night's under-21s game. If you haven't managed to see them yet, then try to do so. Scotland went a goal down against Iceland, and when someone says to you they scored straight from the kickoff, well, they literally did. One touch, and then, bang, Chris Maguire of Aberdeen scoring from the halfway line. Seconds after the opening goal went in, but Gilby Sigurdsson scored again, and Iceland are through to the finals of the under-21s tournament in... Denmark next summer. And they will be joined by the Spanish counterparts who gave joy to their nation just before kickoff here. It was confirmed that the Spanish under-21 team, twice champions of Europe at that level, had defeated Croatia by three goals to nil away from home in their second leg match for a 5-1 aggregate win. Should be Alonso battling there. In that under-21s tournament final, there will be no Germany, the holders having been eliminated in the group stage, no Italy, the shock defeat for them to Belarus. Spain will probably be the favourites. England made it with a goalless draw against Romania earlier today. Scotland feel they've Got a good crop of youngsters coming through, and you can tell by the youngsters in this squad over the last couple of years, they're doing something right. Morrison, Dorans, and Naismith supporting Miller today, all 24 or under. And taking their chances. Whitaker, desperate to get Scotland level. If we sinew in his body. He's put into that cause. Good challenge from Dorans, but again, just seem to be more red shirts at times. Has the offside trap been sprung? It has, but McGregor manages to see the danger early and thwart David Veer on this occasion. Miller back helping out. Even the route back to the goalkeeper was almost blocked. Scotland are doing well enough at the moment. Ball is given against the Spanish midfielder right in front of the referee. Now in his second season at the Bernabeu after his move from Liverpool. Forward goes the cavalry from the back again. Weir McManus has come a little deeper now. Here's Fletcher, lovely one, two, four to choose from. Miller in the middle, and it's an own goal. 
2-2 and Gerard Piquet's on the floor. And can you believe it? So the Spanish. 66 minutes on the clock. And Scotland have come back big time in Glasgow. Fletcher, the architect, a lovely one too. And Piquet just had to stick out his foot and stop it getting to Kenny Miller. Man who won successive Champions League medals with Manchester United as a non-playing substitute, and then with Barcelona a year later, was powerless to stop it going in. Fletcher, Morrison and Miller waiting in the wing, 7-8-9. and nine. But it's an own goal from Piquet. But it's brought Scotland level against all the odds. Craig Levine vindicated for the moment. There's still a quarter of this game to go, though. And Scotland have won nothing yet. First team to score two goals in a competitive game against the Spanish for a year. He's come down from his comfortable perch up above. Pretty sharpish. 55 minutes, 2-0. The game seemed dead. Within 11 minutes, it's all change. The stadium is literally rocking now. Busquets. Iniesta. Javier Alonso finds Busquets again. Back to the drawing board for Spain. They have to win this match all over again. Xavi Alonso with the incisive ball. Xavi Gazzola dispossessed. Scotland temporarily reverting to what they did in Prague and putting everyone behind the ball. We oh, said a draw would be a good result. Anything against... The champions, the all-conquering Spanish side, would be a bonus. They always play better against the bigger opposition. Surely they can't go on and win it, can they? Their last competitive meeting, but the last meeting in Scotland, was 26 years ago, and Scotland scored three to beat Spain. It's their only meeting in Scotland since 1974, no, Johnston scored two and Kenny Dalglish the other. The Spanish still have the smell of victory in their nostrils. Sergio Ramos, delicate footwork from the big fullback. Xavi Alonso, Busquets goes for the return. They want a free kick, not given. Ramos again. Busquets pushing forward noticeably further as Spain try and regain the lead. Sergio Ramos takes his time, he wants it on his right foot. Could have gone anywhere. We are still waiting for a touch in the middle as well. Ramos goes back to Iniesta. How do you find a red shirt with all that dark blue around you? Ball in towards Busquets. Well, he's usually a defensive midfielder. Yet to score for his country in 24 attempts so far. Having made his debut 16 months or so ago. Here is the first substitution by the Spanish. Santi Cazola is going off and Pablo Hernandez is the man that, that the coach Vicente Del Bosque has called upon for the last 20 minutes of this game. And that in itself is a little bit of a surprise. You may have thought that Fernando Llorente might have been thrown on and then we would have had the starting lineup that most of the Spanish media predicted. Instead, it is Pablo getting his fifth cap. Did come off the bench on Friday. It was his first international appearance for 11 months. Despite the fact he scored on his previous appearance in a 5-1 victory in Austria. Also on the bench today is Carlos Marchena, entering veteran status now, the defender who's 31 years of age. 
and recently his world record run was ended. Tell you about that in a moment. Spain threatening again. Substitute gets the ball into the middle. Fletcher eventually helping it clear. Charlie Adam getting a touch. Back heel from Xavi Alonso. Opportunity for Iniesta. Silva offside against Villa. Surely the flag is up. And the referee can blow his whistle as well. And see again that he just strayed as the pass was delayed. Good a metre and a half or so in it, I think. And uh, you know, I was telling you about Carlos Marchena, who went a world record run of 57 internationals without defeat until that run was ended in a rare Spanish defeat. But you can hardly blame them. They were sent over by the Spanish Federation for a friendly in Argentina four days after playing their first European Championship qualifying game and they got hammered by the Argentinians 4-1. For the record, Llorente got the goal that day. He got two in his next match against Lithuania and he is still on the bench, the big man who you think would be suited to a British style of play and maybe this sort of game. But the Bosque knows best. Busquets. Again, the substitute did well. Silva taking it down. Theo was too far away from him. And this peel under pressure from Kenny Miller, who again battles hard, just caught the Spanish player. Peel's demanding the referee take action there. Yes, Kenny Miller's foot was up, but he will protest that he had a right to go for the ball. And I think he had a case. The ball was bouncing loose there. He did catch Xavi Alonso. And another card was given. An argument that he actually touched the ball first. And there becomes the second man in the notebook for the referee, following Stephen Whittaker, who conceded the penalty. Xavi Alonso, the Real Madrid man who was injured, takes the free kick. McManus has headed it behind his own goal, I think. Another corner for the Spanish. Suspicion that Sergio Ramos was offside there. There will be more defending to do, and Nesto will take it short. The man whose goal looked to have settled it. Javi Alonso again. Missed the match on Friday with a heavy cold. Iniesta outstrips Naismith. Dangerous there, put his hands on Iniesta. Just inside the penalty area. Just gets back to shut the door, Kenny Miller. Really proving to be a thorn in the Spanish defence side now. Almost as if they don't expect to lose possession and have a threat at the other end. It'll be easy for Ike Casillas, who is surely destined to become the all-time Spanish international appearance record holder. He's on 115 caps now, and only another goalkeeper, former Barcelona stopper Andoni Zubidareta, is ahead of him on 126. They say keepers can go on to late 30s, even 40, don't they? Such a wealth of talent in between the posts for Spain, and can they do it at the other end? Again, the legs of McGregor temporarily save them. And the follow-up is blazed over as well. Well, he made a stop in the first half to deny David Silva early in proceedings. And on that occasion, Pablo was well positioned. So too was McGregor. Here's another substitution at Hamden now. And finally, Llorente will come on to replace David Silva. A big signing by Manchester City, one of the richest clubs in world football at the moment, gives way. And there seems more balance about the side now. The question is, will Fia remain in an out-and-out striker's role with two up front? It looks like it at the moment. Morente, the man who is on fire and is a real aerial threat, is on. Spanish fans wanted him on beforehand, but Scotland, meanwhile, have an attacking threat of their own. And Kenny Miller's back heel didn't quite set up Morrison for the coup de grace. But Scotland believe that they can win now. Carlos Peel with the 
relatively poor touch there, but even then they had Xavi Alonso back helping out the central defence. It's been a terrific fight back from Scotland, though, from two down. And there's no telling, really, which way this contest will go. Having only won five out of the last 21 internationals against some quite weak opposition as well in world terms for Scotland. They're saving their best for the best. Pablo wanted a corner, but the last touch came back off the substitute, who is a Valencia player, and McGregor will get a goal kick. Pablo made his debut in a Confederations Cup match as a warm-up for the World Cup in June 2009. Looks like Scotland might be making an attacking substitution of themselves as well. I can tell you that Jamie Mackey is warming up down below us. Look like for like. Will Miller be axed? Or will the man who's full of goals in the championship of the English league be brought on for a midfielder? I think it might be Miss Bromichavian's Graham Dorans coming off. The bits of paper just been handed to the fourth official. Meanwhile, James Morrison trying to do what he saw last night and strike from halfway, saw Casillas up his line and it was worth a go but didn't quite have the accuracy of Chris Maguire in that under-21 match I was telling you about earlier. So as things stand, in the early stages still of this group, although Scotland will have played half their fixtures, Scotland will still be in it very much if they can hang on to this point. Spain will be topped by a point, Scotland will be a third of point behind the Czech Republic. Pablo, good cross, good hands from McGregor. Likeable Scottish international keeper rebuilding his career after the misdemeanours. Had a lifetime ban overturned. Craig Lukaveen picking him back in August, 16 months after the incidents against the Netherlands when he was drinking after the match, defying a curfew and then rude gestures whilst on the bench against Iceland. The incidents that caused the end, it seems, of Barry Ferguson's international career, although Levine says that he is welcome back so far. His overtures have been turned down. Mind you, Phil Bartley had turned down Scotland a few times in the past. And here he is today making his international debut in one of the most memorable games in recent Scottish history. Still no chance to get Mackie on the field. Llorente is free in the middle and strikes with his first touch. 11 minutes from time. Llorente brought from the bench again and might well have won it again to break brave Scottish hearts at Hamden. Well, I'm afraid that Stephen McManus won't want to see that one again. He completely misjudged the flight of the cross from the left that should have probably been regulation, and it was just easily followed home from point-blank range from Urente. The change that we told you about is made, and disappointment is written large all over the faces of every Scotland player, not just Graham Dorans who makes way. Spain can dig in themselves when it matters. They showed that in the World Cup. They seem to have an answer to everything at the moment. Charlie Adam there just uh, following through on his uh, number 15. Sergio Ramos here has got himself back up. And the thing about Sergio Ramos is sometimes he does protest too much. But yeah. Yes. And Scotland come back again. Miller had done as well as could have been expected. Naismith was in the middle, but couldn't quite get there. But Casillas is almost embarrassed there. They could have done with that ball hitting the corner flag and staying in. Casillas a little bit fortunate. And Spain. Leading by three goals to two, the last thing Scotland wanted to see was that the referee has given a free kick. 
certainly changes little. Scotland fighting back from two down in this game, and now behind again. Llorente, who got the goal that put them back ahead. He's already scored six goals this season, including scoring the first three league games of the Spanish season. Plus the three for his country coming into this game. So now he's taking it to seven with that devastating first touch. Now the layoff to Iniesta is just as effective. Iniesta rides challenges as though they're not being made. Villa laying it off. Charlie Alonso's pass goes astray. Charlie Adam intercepts. Good well. Scotland playing it quickly as they ought to do. Here's Mackey. Mackey and Miller both on the pitch. Really a gamble by Craig Levine. The substitution was made when they were behind again, but it was planned before that. And he stuck to his guns. I just wonder whether he might have just told Mackey to go in a more central position rather than wide. A little bit too much pushing. Scotland may exploit it with a set piece. They have to send forward the big men. Adam delivers. Not the greatest delivery, but he'll get another chance now. Wanted on his left foot again. Defenders have stayed forward. They have to stay on side though. We all virtually had a free header because we knew that he couldn't challenge. He'd been in an offside position. Busquets now at walking pace for Spain. Time has flown by. We're into well into the last ten minutes. Fletcher couldn't quite get there. He's not quite got into the game in this second half. Charlie Adam with a bit of trickery. Now Fletcher's ball. Miller, Naismith had just timed his run. A little too early for Miller, who must get a free kick there. Three men around him. He always turned to complain about something or other there. Charlie Adam dare have a go from there. Morrison's looking interested as well. Three signals that they have to wait for the whistle. He's never scored an international goal. He has scored three in his last six games in England. Number 15, Charlie Adam. Barnsley walks away. I don't think on his debut he'll be allowed to have a crack there. Fletcher and Morrison try to tee it up for Charlie Adam. The runner blocked it. Fletcher just allows Scotland time to regroup. Adam might look for something more positive here, switches it down the middle, but Puyol heads away. Busquets in the nick of time. Scotland were disappointing in the Czech Republic and offered little until they went a goal behind, then looked a little bit more lively. Failed to score against the Czechs or Lithuania in their other away game. Scored two here against Liechtenstein, but left it until the seventh minute of injury time to get what they desperately needed that night. Only seven minutes of injury time here. Piquet, whose blushes look to have been spared after the own goal that he rifled into his own net. Llorente. Sergio Ramos, Xavi Alonso. Think of the midfield talent that Spain are without. Pablo, one of their newer midfield stars. And that's 25, though, Pablo Hernandez. Valencia making a terrific start to La Liga season. Top of the table, despite the sales of silver and Villa, don't forget. PK away less than comfortably. Whittaker leaves it to go out of play for the throw. Have Scotland got it within them to come back again? Charlie Adams sees space on the right. A little bit behind where he wanted the ball to be played, I think, Bartley. Bartley's pass didn't come to its intended recipient. 
And the counter-attack could be on, thanks to the referee who may get an assist if there's a fourth goal here for Spain. It is four against five, Xavi Alonso a little light with the pass. Scotland planning another change, I think. Sean Maloney of Celtic preparing to go on for his 18th international appearance. He's the only Celtic player in this squad. We called for these qualifiers. The player was actually born in Malaysia, Sean Maloney. Don't know who he's coming on for yet. Spain playing keep ball. We're inside the final four minutes now. Looks like James Morrison has had his work for the evening. The number eight just flashing up on the fourth assistance board. Out of your view at the moment. PK wasn't expecting that. Naismith was nearly in and he forced the error. Last he has done so well this evening. If he doesn't blot his copybook now, I've put the curse on him. It's a miracle he's even playing for Scotland, really. He uh, is able to play for them because his father was born in Scotland but only when his grandparents went for a bit of a weekend away his father arrived early and so consequently Phil Bardsley eventually thought I'm not getting a chance with England I'll choose Scotland so as we told you James Morrison is replaced by Sean Maloney he's only ever scored one goal and it came against the Faroe Islands more than three years ago. Slightly different task this time. Fletcher wins it back. It's a start. They have possession. They have the battling qualities still. They have been brave this evening. Good work from Jamie Mackey on his second appearance. Opportunities maybe for Maloney. And towards Naismith again. Ramos was struggling but headed it away. And it should be a throw in to Scotland, shouldn't it? Whittaker takes it. Scotland still with four in the area. Charlie Adam tries to put it back in. Darren Fletcher does well, has options to his right. It's Barsley. Can he cap his five performance with an assist? PK heads it away this time only as far as Fletcher. Oh, and he's completely messed up. Misunderstanding with Charlie Adam, who would have wanted it on his left foot. And that was an opportunity. And Casillas didn't even need to make the save. There's danger now, Llorente's lurking again towards the far post. Pablo. In the end, as much of a mess up as it was at the other end from Scotland, Naismith needs to win that, doesn't do so. Well, both players in hard, and it could be that Whitaker has just kicked his last because the referee reaches to his pocket, the two went in equally fiercely, but Massimo Basaka will show a second yellow card and the end of the evening for Stephen Whitaker, and perhaps with it, Scotland's hopes. Booked in the first half for the handball. Many referees would have let him off either booking, but for Stephen Whitaker, there is no escape. He's also booked against the Czech Republic. And for Spain, another substitution. Carlos Marchena does get a taste of the action. He'll replace Sergio Busquets. He will play in an even more defensive midfield role, one suspects. He's not a stranger to being sent off, was sent off three times the season before last. Player who has an unusual hobby for a footballer of collecting bonsai trees. The job is almost done for Spain now, but it's been a bumpy route on the road to three points. Not quite there yet, but 11 against 10 now, surely should be, after the dismissal of Stephen Whitaker. He will probably make his 100th Scottish Premier League appearance for Rangers next month. And we are into time added on. Not being many injuries, the substitutions and maybe the goal celebrations, all that Scotland can count on. Pablo will struggle to keep it in, but he's done the right thing. Just made sure that Scotland only had possession with a throw-in right down by their own corner flag. Bosque will be relieved. Just the feeling that Spain haven't quite been firing on all cylinders, but 
think of the talent there without the likes of Javi and Fabregas from midfield, Torres up front. And it's understandable. Scotland have pushed them all the way against all the odds. Maybe still there's a chance here with a late free kick. Kenny Miller picks himself up quickly despite the pain on his ankle from Iniesta's challenge. Freeze had a good game this evening, gave the penalty that many thought would open the floodgates, especially when Iniesta made it 2-0. Can Charlie Adam of Blackpool Football Club deliver now? His country needs him. First called up more than three years ago, waited two years for his second cap, delivered to the far post, and it goes beyond McManus, who was probably involved in a bit of pushing to try to get to the ball, and with it, might have gone Scotland's last hope. A game where they have restored national pride after the disappointment and almost weak surrender in the Czech Republic, and yet they've come up just short again. So often the tale for Scotland and for Craig Levine so far in his managerial career at international level. Here's Pablo. Could be the icing on the cake. Pull back. Naismith, they need it up the other end. We're in the final minute of the three added on. Naismith goes to ground, no free kick given. Spain have it back. And Scotland will be lucky to get another chance in this game. Well, it's been a five-goal thriller. Scotland would like it to be a six-goal thriller with an equaliser, but Spain are content with what they have to continue their perfect record in Group I and to go three points clear of the Czech Republic in second. Scotland will be in joint third with Lithuania, ahead of them by virtue of goals scored, unless Spain get another one. Looped through, and it could be another one, and McGregor's legs for the third time repel the initial danger, and Pablo puts the effort wide on the rebound. And that might be enough anyway, the referee blows for full time, rousing ovation, for a brave Scottish side, and despite McGregor's heroics and the brave fight back, Naismith and then PK's own goal brought them level. Pride may be restored, but the points have gone to the world and European champions. Urenti against Super Sub after Iniesta looked to have sewn the victory up earlier in the game. Villa broke the Spanish scoring record with one of the last kicks of the first half. So Spain triumphed again, but they've been in a terrific game here, pushed to the limit by Craig Levine's side. Naismith started the fight back, PK's own goal gave Scotland hopes and genuine hopes of a surprise against the world champions. But Spain, like the champions they are, have come through once again. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage this evening. See you again next time. We'll leave you with the scoreline at Hamden. Scotland 2, Spain 3.